Hi, Cubicle Crashers. Welcome to another episode of Screw the Cubicle TV. I am Lydia Lee, the founder of Screw the Cubicle and your host for this TV show. And today we have a really exciting guest coming all the way from England. And we actually met last year, or maybe it was the year before, Time Flies in Bali. Uh, and I have Ben Keen, who is the founder of Tribe Wanted. And his mission is to build a global collection of ecotourism communities, which we're going to talk about this topic in the interview today. Uh, and he also wrote this really epic book called Paradise or Bust, uh, which is his adventure story of Tribe Wanted and that's how kind of that whole idea sprang into action and that's also been featured on the BBC uh, documentary as well and so working with other startups uh, Ben also helps really free frustrated corporates which is the work that I do of course as well at Screw the Cubicle and we bond about this um, and I've wanted to actually ask him about how his collaboration with Escape the City has been supporting his other missions as well uh, and he's a part of other startups uh, and being a business advisor for Virgin Startup uh, and I think it's called is it Think the, the uh, school Amsterdam School of Creative Leadership, Ben? Is that, did I say that right? That's Thanks. right. Okay, great. So lots of talent, and I don't know how you found the time, but this is kind of where we're, we're going to pick your brain on uh, figuring out what you're saying yes and no to in your projects and how aligned that is uh, with your career. So thanks for coming on the show. Hey, Lydia, it's a pleasure. It's been, we, we met a year ago in the yoga we barn. Did. We did, And yes. we said, we're going to do this chat within a, a few weeks. So yeah. that was 12 months ago. I so know, I know. And you've had a baby I'm sorry, since but then. we made it. Yeah, you had a baby. I'm, I'm missing life in <laughs> Bali with people like you, but it's good to chat. Yeah, yeah. Well, Bali misses you. And you know what? There's so many more startups here. So when you come back next time, you're going to meet like double of the entrepreneurs and solopreneurs, which is exciting. So it's becoming it's, a, hub. it's amazing in London right now. Every and, and of course, you're in your communities, right? right. But every other person... I, I see her and I say, how's it going? I haven't caught up for a while. What's your plan? And it's like, well, I'm just, I'm just heading off to Ubud. And I'm like, no, 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 the world is not this small. Yeah. Like every other person is going to Ubud. I know, so I I'm know. So Ubud, we're sorry. Yeah, we're sorry for the influx of probably the price is going to raise because we're, we're broadcasting this. There's but. a lot of creative talent <laughs> coming, coming your way. Yeah. And of course, Tribe Wanted, you have, a, I think you're, you're on your second intake of kind of a group of people coming from all over the world this year as well. Yeah, so, so Tribe Wanted in Ubud in Bali is a little bit different to what we've done in the previous projects around the world. Um, it really came out of, uh, like so many of these uh, projects, it came out of just uh, a drive from my side to wanting to go uh, skate for the winter. And I had my wife and uh, I have a young daughter. Mm -hmm. So Isla was nine months, I think, last when we were thinking about this that's right and we were looking at places to go and spend three months i had work online and I, I had the opportunity to do it and you don't get this often when you've got a when you've got children so yeah we wanted to do it and we were we were scouting like where could we do this with our connections around the world and places right. we want to go we we want somewhere that's going to be adventurous cultural mm -hmm. immersion um but we also want to have a startup be part of a startup sure. network and community and uh, we spent a lot of time in West Africa, so we were looking at going back there. But then it was the middle of, um, sadly, it was the middle of the Ebola crisis. Mm. Uh, so although I was up for the adventure, I think taking the family there might have might not have been the right move. <laughs> sure. And yeah. we had friends, we had friends in Bali, with young families, so they they sort of uh, encouraged us, and we came out and we started instead of us just coming by ourselves. I said, well, I should invite people we know in london and through the mm -hmm. communities startup communities we that's know right. and tribe wanted mm. and um it, it kicked off something that's now still going mm. uh sort of 15 months later which is yeah. great yeah and and you know what is the story around because we've talked a little bit about that story and uh but a lot of the, the the listeners and viewers here may not know a bit about your story how tribe wanted was born uh so i know from reading online and and chatting with you uh i know it's something around like 2005 or 2006 you you did some sort of crowdfunding campaign to get uh, people to join you on some island. Was it Fiji or something like that? That's that right. So, so Tribe Wanted was born in the prehistoric uh, <laughs> age of the internet, which right. was the age of MySpace and Hotmail yeah. and MSN Messenger. Uh -huh. and, and Hotmail's the, the sole survivor of that dinosaur sure. era, right? So so I was working, I, I'd spent a few years after college um, working in adventure travel because I didn't want a, a serious job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I was having a great time and learning a lot about the world. Um, but I had come home uh, after one trip and seen there was a lot of change happening with mm. um, online and and I, I was working on a travel blog, um, my first blog, which I called uh, Career Break Cafe, which was the mm -hmm. idea was to help people who were not just 18, but older that wanted to go on longer trips sure. and deal with, they had to deal with things like, uh, you know, a boss, a pet, a mm -hmm. partner, a mortgage, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. life basically before they could take breaks. So I was looking at those blockers 
And a guy got in touch through MSN Messenger, which I never use, and said, hey, Ben, this is really interesting. <laughs> right. Um, have you seen what's going on on MySpace with the Arctic Monkeys? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I knew MySpace, and I knew the Arctic Monkeys were this mm-hmm. you know, young British band. I was right. like, what, what are you talking about? And why are you talking to me about this? I work uh-huh. in, you know, right. I, I run overland trips to Timbuktu and blog about travel. Like, why are you, why? And he said, no, 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 this is, um, I think there's a really interesting trend going on here um, mm. that could be applied to travel mm. and tourism. So we started talking about how the fact that the Arctic Monkeys had built a fan base on on MySpace Mm -hmm. and then released their music. um, And they went to number one all around the world. And it was like, oh, they must be the new Beatles, but they weren't. So it was just the fact that they had this huge, huge community online. And so that was the beginning of a change in the music industry Mm. um, around social networks and, and marketing. And of course, um, there was a, a big wave has has come since across many industries. Mm-hmm. So we were chatting. What would happen if you built an online community around a travel destination or around a, a physical project somewhere? Mm. Um, now this seems really obvious right now in mm-hmm. 2016. You have right. a what? You have a you have a, a space where people gather or a project, and then you have an online version of that. Mm-hmm. Um, a Facebook page or right. Instagram, <laughs> right? But in mm-hmm. 2005, that was that was fairly novel. That's right. Um, so, so our idea was very simply was to say, okay, if we could pick one case study project to to launch this and to build a community online um, that would support this location, and then people could physically mm-hmm. actually go and visit it, and they mm-hmm. would learn about it before they went. And the idea was it was it was to the goal of the project was to help um, a local community develop mm-hmm. their ecotourism, right? And um, wouldn't that be a great experiment? And some of the online community could have a say in how the project developed if they invested time and money into it. So, yes, it was crowdfunding. Yes, it was kind of um, uh, a bit of social networking mm-hmm. experiment. Um, uh, there was there was definitely that reality TV feel to it without it being a, a game. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, people online and then going to an island. And yeah. the reason we picked an island as a destination was because we wanted to get, very simply, we wanted to get attention. Right. And we thought, what's the opposite of an online community? It's probably a remote island somewhere. Right. <laughs> um, so I started Googling for islands, um, uh, which is a dangerous habit mm-hmm. um, when you're sitting in the winter in England like this um, <laughs> 10 years ago. And I found, um, found you know, a whole world of uh, sunshine and mm. millions of dollars in super mm-hmm. yachts and realized that wasn't something I could be part of. Mm. But then we then we um, started chatting to people online through forums and um, there's a lot of enthusiasts out there mm-hmm. for desert islands. Mm-hmm. We found someone in Australia who was an island broker and he said, actually, there's a place in northern Fiji that's just come on the local market, which you wouldn't find mm-hmm. on Google. And they are looking to develop an ecotourism community, but they're very remote, so it's not going to attract hotels. Mm-hmm. It's right off the northern side of the country. Anyway, this might be cool for you. So we got in touch, and I went down to Fiji um, because at some point you have to go go and, go and sit with people who are living in these places sure. and talk to them, and this is what I knew about. So, mm-hmm. And I sat with the chief of the island for a week, and we agreed. Wow to try a partnership and then the next thing I had to do was to raise quite a bit of money within six <laughs> weeks to pay the deposit right uh, so that's when we came back and like pre-sold I guess crowdfunded right. kick-started our, mm-hmm. our project by selling memberships to Tribe Wanted mm-hmm. um, joining our tribe and for I think it was $220 you could become a member mm. and you'd get a, a one week stay on the island oh, and wow. um, over over the next three years then right. that was there was no guarantees other than you could stay on the island mm-hmm. and you get local food there was no infrastructure Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so that's that's how we launched tribe wanted and then how did did it transition to where where it is today because i only know really about the bali project which uh because i did a speaking you know i was invited to to, i think speak on the first was the first intake or the second intake uh with you know a bunch of people that were from america and from england and, and these were all kind of startups people that have something going on and, and some people that don't and it was kind of business oriented versus um, you know here's what we're going to come and contribute back to the to, to the Balinese community how did that transition happen to more business and startups yeah so so that's a very recent thing that only happened as a result of coming to Bali mm. um, with my wife and daughter 18 months ago so it was more that we just we were going to do that and we fitted it into Tribe Wanted but the, right. I guess the thing that hasn't changed and we've done a, we've only done a half a dozen projects but they've all been long term in location working right. with local communities right. um and that the, what hasn't changed is that the idea is that you you go and 
live somewhere for a little while. I mean, it can be for a couple of weeks, but you really immerse yourself um, in a project. Mm -hmm. It's not just it's not just a holiday. Mm. Um, and there's a community element. So there's a group of you doing it together. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's people following it online and supporting each other. So that's those are the elements that stayed the same. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of focus around sustainable living. I, the project in Bali is probably the most different to everything else we've done. Mm. Um, all our other projects, and we've done a project, long-term project in Sierra Leone in West Africa, right. which is on a beach as well. Mm -hmm. We have a fantastic um, project in the hills uh, of Umbria in Italy, which is oh, a right. sustainable yeah. farm, organic mm. farm, and wine and cheese and And don't you have meats. a project in like Papua New Guinea or something like that? I think I read that somewhere. Yeah, so we have another island project in Papua New Guinea, which is really exciting. And wow. we're just recruiting for the next next uh, season of that later this year. So, right. so these projects, are, they have some similarities. Mm -hmm. um, the Bali project was more a case of saying, well, I'm going to be there. And let's overlap a little bit with the startup world because mm. that's where I'm doing it work as well mm -hmm. um so it's an accidental thing really but um but yeah that's been that's been the journey so who is an ideal person if if, if someone's kind of thinking of joining tribe wanted um what's that person's life what's happening in that person's life that this would be a great opportunity for them and what would they be seeking for and what do you think um af the aftermath of that experience would be like for someone that's an ideal fit for tribe wanted yeah, I think the, the really the, uh, the 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 thing that ties everyone together is this sort of curiosity around wanting to uh, live differently for mm. just a little while. So yeah. um, just try different things, and of course, travel does that anyway mm. in many different ways. But really, in a in a community sense, and it's from a week at a time, so it's not a lot big commitment. Yeah. Um, Clearly, for the people who are coming to our project in Bali, it's something around not just going and immersing themselves in uh, this interesting new space of startups and health and well-being in, in Ubud, but mm -hmm. really also uh, moving forward something they're working on. So mm. th that's very much around the career change uh, side of things. Yeah. Um, whereas the other the other projects are around just fully immersing yourself in that local culture. So the uh, the Papua New Guinea project is mm -hmm. like living on an island. Um, fairly remote it takes even like a few hours to get there from mainland Papua New Guinea mm -hmm. and actually just living with this local community that's been developing its uh, ecotourism and we're supporting them to get to the next level mm. uh, and just having that amazing immersion immersive experience so curious adventurous um, people, but but wanting to do it together, not yeah. just going off by themselves. Yeah, and and I think you know even whether whether it's a, a you know a shared interest about a particular cause or a movement or building a business, really, I think you know it's just so much more effective in numbers because you only know what you know. <laughs> you know, like I remember when I started a business, I never knew anything about co working spaces or living abroad. Like this is kind of like a Tim Ferriss fantasy of like coders and programmers that could do this, and I'm like, I don't do any of that. You know, I'm a consultant. How could I do this on the road? Um, I was completely. Yeah unaware you know that somebody could literally work online that wasn't you know the tech guys right because that's all you see in in that tim ferris world uh and nowadays with as, as you as you as we know a, a common partner that we know is huboot right it's great co-working mm. space has gotten tons of press because of just such an amazing environment of community right they've really built not just a space for working but really curated events speakers and um skillshare uh you know moments where people can share knowledge which i think is so important in a startup so how do you think you know with with having tribe wanted and obviously your work at virgin startup and and escape the city do you think that's kind of changing the way that people are quitting faster and, and getting more information on how to quit or what's out there that they can do for a living um be by immersing into these sorts of tribes that are being built around the world yeah it feels to me like um the beginning of some kind of uh career renaissance so yeah um, or work it working renaissance and obviously there's always trends in the way people work and live and travel and so mm -hmm. on but the, this combination of um of, of you know being able to travel around the world very quickly and cheaply um and mm -hmm. all these communities popping up online and everyone being hyper connected and, and whatever we feel about facebook um, it's an extraordinary um, way of very quickly knowing you're only three connections away from pretty much everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and so if you're – people complain a lot about um, their social media kind of content and the feeds on their mm. social media. And I'm always like, well, but, that, but it's, it's, it's you and what you're interested That's in. Right. And even the ads are targeted at you. Yeah. So, so, so unclick the stuff that you're not interested in. Mm -hmm. Unfriend or, or stop following the people that are posting things that you don't like That's or right. don't – don't match to your values 
And then suddenly you're sort of like, oh, this match is this and this and this and this and this. Mm. And, um, and so I think that's that kind of layering of um, it feels very normal. And we're, we're even, oh, I speak for myself, mm-hmm. <laughs> not you, Lydia, but I'm even a slightly a generation ahead of the millennials where um, mm-hmm. this comes completely naturally. Mm. Um, so that's one side of things. The, the sense of opportunity and being part of communities all around the world feels much more mm. uh, feels much more like natural than yeah. perhaps it would have been. And it's it's not so much that it, it's less pioneering than maybe even 10, 20 years ago. It just feels like, oh, it's possible because the mm-hmm. technology is there because so many other people are doing it. That's right. But the big question remains is financial sustainability, right? Mm. So um, we had a group of Harvard students with us in Bali a oh, year that's right. ago. Yep. And they were studying and actually they, the, the, the piece that they published or the report they published was reasonably skeptical, mm. uh, which you expect from academics, right? But it was around <laughs> healthy skepticism around the fact yeah. that, look, there's a lot of people trying this, but it's yet to be proven whether mm. um, you can actually build a sustainable career out of it. Mm. Now, that's coming from the uh, quite a, uh, you know, ambitious Harvard mm-hmm. rule the world mentality, I think. Mm-hmm. But, um, but this comes, I think what's interesting is that if, for example, you are... Um, you're having a very busy life and you feel like the pressure of the world are building up mm-hmm. and you've got these core values as an individual or as a, right. a family and you say, oh, we just want to escape to the country. Um, we want to go and build um, a good life on a farm in Italy mm-hmm. and have a vineyard and mm-hmm. um, run a bit of freelance work online and, and so on. Then the great thing about things like whether it's Tribe Wanted or coming out to Ubud and Bali or all the stuff that's going on around these world with co-working and, and so on, is you can try it. Mm-hmm. You can try it. You yeah. can you can test whether this is right for you. Both from is this is this wh- who I really am, mm-hmm. um, and also does this make sense? So I can mm. go and do this for three months mm. on a sabbatical. That's right. And I can yeah. see it. I can see at the end of it. Is this something that I want to do forever? Because there are there absolutely are compromises, mm. uh, and the grass is not always green. Although it absolutely is very true. green in Bali. Yes. Uh, all the <laughs> paddies are very green. Well, I so, love that you so talked th- about sabbatical because that was kind of what jump started my 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 perspective really you know to, to really see that this was because as i said i thought it was all coders and programmers and computer geeks mm. you know where did mm. i fit in in this entire thing well it, it was it was yeah it was for a long time and it wasn't until that i did my own sabbatical because like i had a, a complete nervous breakdown that happened to me in, in moscow during a business trip and i had to take time off and see a psychiatrist and all this stuff because i literally had uh, a complete meltdown that i didn't uh you know it was stress, really. You know, my health was taking a toll. So I took a month off, two months off, actually. And I did a sabbatical in Southeast Asia and came to Bali. And I remember meeting in, in Malaysia before coming here, uh, a German guy who was running his entire consulting uh, company online. And he wasn't making like tons and tons of money. He was making maybe about 50000 a year, which is less than what I was, I was making about six figures in, in Vancouver. But then seeing his, his 50000 a year, what he bought him you know, which is time and space and flexibility. And, you know, he was only working 20 hours a week. And, and he's like, I could work more, but I didn't really need more money. You know, time was more of an asset to me. It really got me to think about, you know, did I need six figures to live this beautiful life? I'm not really a Louis Vuitton, you know, like Porsche driving girl. Anyway, what I was making all that money for was actually to travel, you know, to, to kind of have, have time to work on projects that I cared about. And maybe it didn't cost $100,000. You know, maybe I was hustling for that money because that number felt like it was the respectable number to make, right? So that's yeah. kind of what people, I think, figure out when they travel is that maybe in other parts of the world, maybe not the Western world, you can, you can have a really decent life with children, you know, to get extra help for your children, which you couldn't afford in London. I mean, getting a nanny, you've got to be pretty rich in London mm. to have help. But you can do that here for about $300 a month and have a full-time cook and someone to take care of your kids. What does that uh, mean for your business? I need, Sorry. This is it. I'm going to be on <laughs> you the next come back here. Yeah. Um, you know, that no, was impossible no, right. And once you, once you realize that and you experience it, the going back, you yeah. know, the genie is out of the bottle. Right. Um, this is, we see this a lot at Escape the City. I've drawn a, a this is the only economics I'm going to bring into this okay. conversation because I'm not very good at it. But this is, so this, here you've got, a, the top line is kind of, is your income. Uh-huh. And the bottom line is your expenses. So when your income's higher, you spend more. And when it's less, it goes less. So mm-hmm. if this point in the middle is essentially where you you quit mm-hmm. or you you change your life, mm-hmm. you move to Bali, you, you know, you you drop that hundred, you know, six figure salary. Then what happens is the figure below pretty much always um, drops down. Your cost of living drops mm-hmm. down as well. Mm-hmm. And so what's left in between is often the same. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and, and yes, of course, there's going to be a period where you're adjusting and then it slowly, hopefully mm-hmm. changes again. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's where the fear and the risk comes in. Okay. But, um, but it's, it's interesting, all the people you talk to who have escaped mm-hmm. or who've really transitioned mm-hmm. into another career, mm-hmm. this, is, this is often what's happened to them. Mm-hmm. And so they go, oh, yeah, I, I took a significant pay cut. Um, or even 100% to start with when I was living off savings. Um, But actually, after I realized that Mm. lifestyle-wise, it was very similar. Now, some things you have to drop, maybe if you liked eating out a lot in nice restaurants or you always had these services, then, okay, that's not possible anymore. But um, you're filling that void with a lot of other things. So it's fascinating, the psychology around that stuff. Mm. Um, But until you try it out, and that's the thing, I think you can just, you can test these things exactly. out. Exactly. Without- I think I think a sabbatical is the best way to put it because I think you know sabbatical isn't a permanent decision. It's it's long enough. It could be a month. It could be a couple of weeks uh, to to see because you could read about someone's story and and think that's amazing. As you said, the grass is greener on the other side. But until you experience it and bring your wife or your kids or you know to, to even see if you like being on the road, you know, sounds uh, it sounds kind of romantic to be living out of a suitcase and traveling in exotic places. But like I really realized, like I thought I would be traveling a lot more than I did because I. I really, really love travel, but I actually really also like a home base, for example, to be mm. somewhere permanently for about three to four months, have a base, yeah. rent out my place, and then go and travel somewhere else in Vietnam or yeah. wherever else I might be going. But I actually like the, the, still like the, the symbol of home. You know, I didn't really yes. want to live out of a backpack, and I never knew that until I, you know, came out here and experimented uh, with a six-month stint. Well, two months to begin with, then six months, and I never went back. So I've been out here two and a half years. My experiment became a little bit more permanent, right? Um, so, you know, it, it, you're right. You have to test it out. You got to see if it's for you, and be honest about it. You know, you don't have to really do what other digital nomads or um, you know, corporate escapees are doing, you've got to make it your own and, and customize that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about fear, you know, because you you obviously work with Escape the City and, and I, I love uh, the mission behind Escape the City uh, because you guys uh, help unfulfilled corporates transition into work they love and it doesn't always necessarily have to be entrepreneurship. Not everybody wants to own their own business, but there's a common value being shared about m- having meaningful work, you know, having impactful work that I can see a ripple effect of my, my efforts and my focus for it to affect other people, for example. Uh, so I know on the Escape the City website, they, they talk, they have these huge stats about, you know, 71% of people want more purpose in their career. Uh, almost a little bit over 50% is experiencing like negative and physical, like mental well, like mm. wellness issues, right? As a result of their job. And, and like lots of people really want this change. So why do you think from working with, you know a few different uh, corporates in in the last few years why do you what do you think is the main reason people get stuck in a career that they hate yeah it's a it's a great question so last year i worked uh, closely with 300 people who were going through wow. this escape transition mm. um sort of on a one-to-one basis so i got to know everyone's story and was helping them mm-hmm. um and there is quite is what's interesting is that that shifted from it being very corporate focused mm. even when escape started five years ago management consultants accountants lawyers right. to now being a much broader uh, range of people so people from all parts of private public sector or f- with the similar feelings mm. and the feeling is essentially this is that it's not so much about the work they're doing every day although yes some of it feels like it's mind numbing and it's not really ha- fulfilling their potential as mm. a you know in terms of their ability that's right it's really around the culture of where they work so mm. Um, it's around feeling like, oh, uh, you know, 20th century um, work is very much around um, climbing up the financial ladder and developing some skills along the way. Mm-hmm. But there is really no autonomy in your yeah. work. Whereas the 21st century career um, is much more, it's around those two things because mm-hmm. you have to have financial uh, mm-hmm. sustainability and you, you have to, you need to be able to develop your skills as you mm-hmm. grow. Um, but it's very much also about autonomy and um, having more um, ownership and control mm. and say over the direction you're going sure. in. And if you look at a lot of traditional careers and institutions, that's not possible. Mm. It's all about saying, I'm going for partner or I'm, I'm trying to get into this level of this organization, but I can't really control it. I've just got to get my head down and go. Right. Um, so, so this is what's this is this is the block that most people feel is they're like I I I basically see out of the corner of my eye all this stuff going on in the world mm-hmm. and I feel it deeply around um, uh, around you know purpose and and my mm-hmm. curiosity around wanting to have more impact and we we live in a world where ignorance um, of like how things work mm-hmm. you know how a product is made is is 
being washed away because we're like, oh, there are, you know, we can't buy this, you know. So we're becoming much more conscious consumers, which we mm-hmm. have to be. Mm-hmm. And as a result, we was, but people are still working in organizations that they know are broken. Mm. Like the, in the, the big picture of these systems, yeah. whether it's financial or otherwise, are mm. broken. And so they're like, oh, and there's all these startups doing really cool things about it, whether yeah. they're real social enterprises or whether they're just, um, you know, they're, sol- they're solving a problem for a group mm. of people. Mm. So, um, so, yeah, it becomes a, a niche that they want to scratch and then mm-hmm. they have their own sort of natural uh, – interests and so on yeah and so so you see these people and then they're like every day they hear these stories of people are doing it and mm-hmm. making it sound like it's possible and that mm. sound more and more like them mm. so the, the biggest um there's a number of, of blockers one is around um the main the, the, the kind of practical blockers like oh what if i don't have the money yeah you know, all this money's kind of always stuff. number one the career career suicide is the yes. big one. If I take time out, yeah. then I'm off, I'm done. Which in a, in the states is is huge, mm, but it's also absolutely. true in yeah um, and other parts of the world, especially um, with an the, older older workforce as well. They'll think someone someone younger and cheaper will take yeah. my spot, right? Yeah, and a lot of the people we're yeah. working with are mid thirties um, and older, right. so it's not twenty five year olds right. wanting to build a, another productivity app. You know, sure, it's, it's, it's <laughs> all rich and stuff. Yeah. Um, the, the other big fear uh, or blocker for people is this what, what's known as imposter syndrome. So this mm. idea that you feel like, uh, so, okay, Ben, you're a social entrepreneur and eco-tourism expert and, uh, you know, career change, uh, you know, guide, guide, mm. guidance person. And I'm like, am I? Is that re- seriously? No, I'm just making this up as I go along. Right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, that feeling that someone's going to tap you on the shoulder yeah. and go, Ben, uh, Lydia, the, mm-hmm. Just, Do you have twenty I'm, years of experience to be talking about this topic? <laughs> yeah, and but 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 we actually live and breathe it. Right. Probably what we're doing uh, more, so we may feel mm-hmm. that less because we've chosen to do this That's right. um, day in day out, whether we get paid or not. Yeah. Whereas people who are actually in those kind of corporate or tra- more traditional jobs, mm-hmm. they they just like how did seriously how did I get in here? I barely understand what I'm doing, um, and yet I'm getting well paid for it. Mm-hmm. And so this imposter syndrome when you transfer it, and you say. No, you can start a healthy food business or mm-hmm. you can, you know, escape to Bali and, and, and teach yourself how mm-hmm. to do online design right. uh, so you can work freelance. They're like, Re- no, it's, it's, that's for other people. That's for designers or right. for coders or whatever. So, yeah. so it's a huge blocker and that's just confidence building, um, mm. which takes time and it takes community to help you do it. Mm. So those are some of the things that we come across. Mm. And the way to unblock them mm-hmm. and to help ourselves shift forward is one, realizing you can't do it in one one go you can't it's not often you can although sometimes you watch a screw the cubicle talk or a read the right book and and suddenly it's you're, suddenly you've had it. this like thunderbolt and like yeah. you quit your job and everything changes mm-hmm. it's more often through smaller experiences yes. and being part of the community yes. which is comes back to everything that that i've been involved with mm. that you start to see people shifting their um their behavior and their mindsets mm. and then the opportunities come with it so yeah so that's why we do what we do and it's it's fascinating to see it but the we call them um, at escape. We call them wobbles, mm-hmm. where someone's committed to basically experience or test this new path, coming on a three-month career mm-hmm. change program mm-hmm. part time, whilst they still have their full-time job. Right. Yeah. And they'll they'll have their um, midweek evening session with us and the fifty people on the program. They have their weekends and they'll be buzzing and they'll have mm-hmm. their kind of little action list that they're being accountable for, like small small steps. Yeah. And then they'll go back and have three days in their job and they go into a slump again and so it's mm-hmm. like this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um and it's it, it, these wobbles happen a lot and the self doubt and everything else yes. and so so our job as a community and and, and you know with all our projects is to, to help people just get through those wobbles mm. by reminding them um to go back to like figuring out what's the priority for them and is mm. this a good idea to pursue or not yeah yeah. And does it still align with, I mean, is, uh, you know, what they're working on? You have to know their values and what they're striving towards as well, because sometimes if it's just for the money, for example, you know, it's, it's going to be very wobbly, <laughs> you know, because we, so as we all know, we don't make money right away. You know, it just doesn't happen. And I get that question a lot. It's like, can you give me an idea? Because, you know, I'm, I'm kind of categorized as the, you know, my specialty is helping people come up with business ideas, right? Which is like this blending of like skill sets and passions and interests. And it's never going to be this perfect idea. And like everyone seems to think it's this 
purpose thing that's like a Gandhi effect. It's like this one thing you die with and you won't start anything until you get to this one thing, which as you say, take these small movements, right? Small actions yeah. that reveal more to you, right? And, yeah, and, and they, create new, yeah. they create new habits. That's yeah. right, So yeah. whether it's doing, doing your two press-ups today, four press-ups, right. tomorrow six press-ups on Thursday or, yeah. or doing that. But for, for most of us, uh, some people, you know, your Tim Ferriss's are on another level, but for most people, it, mm-hmm. you need someone else to, d- to push you f- through on this. So yes. yeah. who, who you do this with is kind of the key to all. Totally. Um, your, que- your question on um, values driving decisions is, mm-hmm. is the sense piece to everything. So we, mm-hmm. we have this thing here, which, are, which I've just scribbled down, which we call our, our good idea criteria. So yep. what are your good idea yes. criteria? So in startup terms, this means... Um, very simply, when you have a number of ideas on the table or options as to what you do next with your mm. business, but let's say it's just to start a business or mm-hmm. to start testing something, how do you decide which one you should right. go with? Because mm-hmm. you can't, you can't do them all. Yes. And you can apply this to career change opportunities right. or movements within your own organisation. Mm-hmm. So, what 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 do you cross check this with other than your instinct? And whether it pays better or not, right? Um, because that's that's not necessarily the smart way of doing it. Mm-hmm. So your good idea criterion, I only ever pick three because mm-hmm. more than three priorities yeah. isn't is none. I agree, right? So because <laughs> you can't do it. Too overwhelming. So if your good idea criteria would be like, what are the three things that are driving you that are most important to you that mm-hmm. would not change, um, do not change regardless of mm-hmm. what opportunities there are. So for example, um, mine might be, well, they're not might, they are, uh, mine are right now in my life and they shift a little bit as yes. you go through, life, depending yes. on circumstance, uh, would be enough time and money uh, for my family. So mm-hmm. that's like really under the banner of fulfilling my family's potential. So, you mm-hmm. know, I'm at home today because I, I make sure that I can spend a decent amount of time at home mm-hmm. um, to be with them. Uh, and and then there's a certain level of income there that wasn't there two years ago because mm-hmm. our family's growing and, and so on. And that's fine. You know, mm-hmm. that's what we set it at and that's the bottom layer. So, you know, all those extra volunteering opportunities that you student, I now have to trim down a little bit. Sure. Um the second one is that I want to spend, you know, I'm going to spend 40, 50 hours a week working with a group of people mm-hmm. uh, or connecting with people like we are now. I want, to, I want to make sure that those people are on this journey, have the same view of the world that I do mm-hmm. or, or are interested in this worldview. Right. If they're not, I don't want to spend time with them because they're going right. to start to pull me away, <laughs> away mm. from what I want. Yeah, they can what influence is. everything that you're thinking as well because, you know, we're, we're sponges, right, when we're with people all the time. Yeah, and it's all the energy, you know, the, the yeah. positive energy stuff that comes with that. So, um, but that's that's often for people. It's a huge thing. Like they have all these strong values and like mm-hmm. mission, and yet they spend forty hours a week with people that, or with, yeah. within a cult that doesn't support that yeah. worldview. Yeah. And then the third thing for me would be I always want to have um, experiments and mini adventures going mm-hmm. on that keep me on the edge test my comfort zone mm-hmm. and so on and they could, that can form many different things but that's you know right now to be honest it's having a young family and trying to build three startups so that, <laughs> that's yeah. keeping me on the yeah but right. um so so those would be my three others would have uh, people would have things like i want to be able to work remotely for mm. six months of the year mm. so if you've got that, something like that in in your good idea criteria mm. and then you open a shop um right. in in london that has a, a supply chain, and then six months later, you're saying, oh, it's a nightmare, the shop's going well, but I just can't get away from it. Mm. And you're like, well, that business model was not the right one for your right. your criteria. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So whenever people get stuck, I always go go back to them and say, look, what are the three things that really matter mm-hmm. to you? What, what's driving it? And these can be mm-hmm. practical as well as yes. um, aspirational. Mm. And then if it's not a massive tick or a green light, if it's not a strong green light, if mm. it's slightly amber, mm-hmm. then you just throw it away. Yeah. And you move or park on it. You know, you don't have to park. waste the idea. I have, a, I have a wall that's literally called the parking lot, which is all my great right. ideas when I travel. Because you do, right? You, you meet people, you see an opportunity. And sometimes it's, it's not a right for right now idea. It might mm. be a right for later idea when I've maybe curated, you know, people to help me because I like work. Like one of my criteria is actually I really enjoy working with people. So a lot of times when I want to do a retreat or, uh, or an experience, I don't really want to do it alone. I like it that I can facilitate, which is my genius zone. You know, I love mm. talking. Uh, I, I love getting people together and, and, and embracing an idea and helping people support an idea. But I don't want to run it on my own. I have so much more fun doing it with other people. So certain projects mm. that I have, I'm like, I could run it on my own, but I so know this is going to suck up my time, my energy, and I'm not going to have fun. 
doing it alone, then I have to park it. But it's not a wasted idea because eventually, no. you know, like it's going to come into fruition when I meet the right person. You know, when I get in contact with the right networks of people that all of a sudden that idea has legs. You know, you can do it right now. Um, and you're someone that so, has, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I, apart from agreeing 100%, I was just thinking I've got three parked ideas that have yeah. a little bit of traction. Uh-huh. That I want, I want to happen in the world, but I can't do them. Right. So, can I mention them really quickly? Yes, of course. And then, if any of your um, any of your uh, followers or listeners, yeah, is interested in the ideas, mm. they can connect with me, and I'm not going to go go take it. Okay. Make it happen. Okay. And this yeah. isn't just a, this isn't just an idea; they've actually been developed into concepts. Okay, great. So the first one's called uh, it's called Roost, and um, it's around like trying to build a community around tree houses. So people who are interested in tree houses. So um, there's already a re- URL out there. It's Roost mm-hmm. in a Tree. Com. Okay. And we were trying to map all the tree houses in the world. So that basically for the tree house community, because there's lots of people who are into tree houses, but there's a lack of um, resources, places and, for people yeah. to gather around. So, Ooh. and it's a potentially really fun, nice brand. So that exists. So if someone wants to take that on, get in touch. Okay. Uh, the second one is called Pool Hunter. So this actually came up in Bali. This was an idea. I've we, heard about this one. <laughs> playing with in Bali, but it, nothing's happened with it. But it's, uh, I think it's, I think it could be really good fun. Um, so Pool Hunter is this basic travel uh, issue where you get to a p- new place and you want to swim because mm-hmm. often you do, mm-hmm. uh, and you don't know where the nearest pool, like whether it's a wild watering hole or whether it's a hotel mm-hmm. swimming pool, or and an pool Olympic sized sh- pool, which a lot of people yeah, look and for. Pool Hunter is basically your, your guide to finding the nearest places to swim. That's awesome. Um, and I like what I really wanted to sort of hack was this sort of like tips and tricks into okay you so you're in bangkok you've got the airport take the train here Mm -hmm. there's a hotel if you go in if you go in the the the, the guy on the door is called bruce and you just say hey bruce i'm coming in to do this tell him this he'll he'll show you where the pool is the towels are hidden under here right you know this is this is how you should behave there if you want to use the pool right you know spend at least five dollars at the bar whatever right um and and pool that's pool hunter Mm. so poolhunter.co is already online but we haven't done anything i haven't done anything with it because it was just a little hack Mm -hmm. and then the third one which is a is potentially a a much um more sort of uh purposeful thing is uh, a blog piece i wrote um a a year and a half ago now which was just listing schools around the world that Mm. i've been involved with Mm. who i see a change in the way uh, changing potentially changing the future of education um so disruptive schools basically yes. um so the blog post is called schools for life it's mm-hmm. on medium and it's probably the blog that i've written that i've got the least authority on it's just my interest rather than stuff i know a lot about and yet it's the one p it's the blog that's traveled the furthest so i mm. think you know it's got like forty thousand views wow. which for me is a lot um and and i've had a lot of people get in contact and it's just a list of 10 schools including the green school in bali mm. that are, are really interesting and i think a change in the way we we may look at education in the future mm-hmm. and so there's a good, great opportunity there to try and turn that into something whether it's an ebook or whether it's a community where you, you profile put a spotlight on a school for life um anyway there's lots of people interested but no one's yes. no one's like wants to take it forward or has taken it forward right. so those are three little awesome. uh, park projects that are up for uh-huh. grabs and what's your what's your email of choice or website that they can visit to actually get a hold of you if they're interested in a project yeah just i mean um twitter is great so i'm on twitter at ben keen um uh, but email is ben at tribe wanted.com excellent so we'll put up the url on the video so people can click through That's, uh, those are some awesome ideas actually i can definitely contribute to the pools in ubud because I know all the ins and outs of like kind of like what, where to get a free one without paying for the pass and how to use the credit, this is you know, to buy needs food. To shared with people, right? Yeah. And actually, ultimately, it could bring um, more tourism to more remote yeah. areas. So, so I think um, I think it could be a really good thing. But it's a little, it's a fun little experiment for someone who wants to take it on. Yeah, and I think uh, it's, it, it is it is a great little test of just like be, belonging to a project or putting some ideas forward into something that's not their corporate job. You know, just to get yeah. the, that idea muscle going. Because I think a lot of times when we're in a nine to five job, we're kind of you know conforming to that role, and we're doing the same thing over and over again. We're eating the same food, we're taking the same time break, seeing the same coworkers. We're not really expanding, you know, our brains into an, another idea, right? So to to kind of have that something on the side that's not you know you're gonna you know b- bankrupt everything everything and then go into this project you know it's not a risk yeah no totally. project, it's not you know? it's this all or nothing yeah. mindset is really dangerous um mm. 
having said that, you still have to get down and focus on stuff at, That's at right. the time. Well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, how, how, what is your advice around, because, you know, you have all these multiple projects that, from what I can see anyway with my, my eyes, is that they do, they have alignment. It's not like you're taking on random projects that don't make sense to you. So obviously you're driven by a particular movement or a cause or, or a way of impact uh, that you've really found that you want to be a part of and contribute to in your, life, in your lifetime. And maybe in time, the projects change, because I always look at projects as like a vehicle, you know, vehicle will change uh you know all the time especially when you get older but maybe that 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 a uh, theme you know around that purpose doesn't you know but it can come in kind of different masks and different faces so um for people that kind of have 101 ideas in their heads and they're and i get that a lot from from my own audience of like which one do i go for and yes we talked about values driven uh ideas but how do you kind of you know know that you're you're for example good enough to do a project you've never done before so do you pick projects that will utilize a skill set that you're really familiar with, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, when do you go, mm, maybe I don't know anything about it, but I have enough interest about it. Is that enough uh, of, of validation to go, I should take a look and see where that leads me? So where's that kind of, you know, ratio of like, do I have enough skills? And then what's the passion and my interest? How do you kind of blend that together to help you validate if that's the, the, the path you should be on or that's the partnership or, or project you want to be a part of? Yeah, I think uh, I have a fairly simple answer for this, which okay, may great. not be very scientific, which it's is, um, do I think about it in the shower? <laughs> okay, yeah, I like that one. And, and, and if I do on a regular basis, then it's worth probably spending a bit of time mm. outside of the shower looking into it. Mm. Now, we talked about the good idea criteria. That's really the bottom line for me on any decision making That's right. around projects. Um, but, the, but this thing of like, it's, it's, it's stuck in my head. Mm -hmm. really is this you know a bit you know the analogy to being in relationships or meeting people is perfect yeah. for this kind of stuff this idea yeah. of dating ideas yes so if an I if, so, if if this person is stuck in your head you should really <laughs> there's only two things to do you yeah. either got to pursue that person right or you've got to like somehow get them out of your head yeah. uh, in another way right um so so with this idea and and one thing we try and do a lot of in the escape school is say okay because people are like, I've got all these ideas or I've got, I'm not sure what I should be doing. And we're like, right, we've got a weekend together. Mm. We are going to all have a one night stand with one idea. We're all going to commit for 24 mm. hours to an idea. It. And it's, it, what's fascinating is that people are even find that challenging to say, well, hang on, just for one, just a whole weekend on this one idea. And what about the others? I'm like, not interesting others pick your favorite pick right. the, pick the prettiest yes pick the one you're most attracted to yeah and just stop just play with it let's do mm. some um visualizing it mm -hmm. um talking to some potential customers mm. about it yeah you know testing right. it out yes testing yes. it on each other building yeah. some kind of basic prototype yeah um and and it's fascinating what can be achieved so we just did a um a good example of this is we just did um at the escape tribe we we have for each um, of these three month startup programs we have a a big sort of apprentice style challenge we mm -hmm. call it a pop-up challenge mm. uh, because it's a pop-up shop so last week we set it for the current startup tribe which is 50 people we gave them 200 pounds per team teams of 10 five teams of 10 200 pounds each and we mm. gave them a week and they're all in full-time work these guys mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. they've got to do this around their work right um and on the saturday they were going to open a shop a pop-up shop five teams in one shop wow. uh in soho in london um, and the theme of the shop was, was the, it was going to be called Treat and it was a Mother's Day theme shop mm -hmm. for Mother's Day weekend. Mm -hmm. So they had to come up with a brand, a concept, a products, yeah. make the products, market wow. them online, um, get people in the shop and then s sell over the weekend. And they were judged on um, revenue, uh, the brand and the size of their tribe they built through their social media. Mm. Um, and it, it's amazing because you've got, <laughs> you've got these people who are very talented and these people are driven to, yeah. towards startups, but they're also coming from a, a more corporate background. Mm -hmm. And they suddenly go from this thing where they've been talking a lot about ideas for a few weeks and doing some little steps on mm -hmm. them to suddenly within a week coming up with a brand new idea. Okay, they've got a bit of seed funding and support, but not mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. And within a week, they've all made a profit yeah. on wow. something that didn't exist. Yeah. And, and one of the teams made, you know, had it from a £200 um, seed investment, made £1,000. Wow. Uh, so, and, and, they, and they create these brands that have actually stand up as really good quality. Um, people are looking at them going, wow, is it, you've been working on this for a year or two. I haven't yeah. seen this elsewhere. Right. Well, no, I've been working on it for three days. Right, yeah. And it just dispels all these myths around mm. um, the fact that 
these things take time, mm. that these things cost money, yeah. that these things. And, and the great thing is, you know, very quickly, oh, I love retail. I love selling.、Mm -hmm. I love pop ups. I love or I hate it all.、Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's, so you just proven that. Right. Yeah.、Uh, it's or I love the creation of, of the, the story of the brand, but I hate it. Exactly. You know, the, the, the,、yeah. the sale, sales part later on or something or, like that. Like、yeah. that, that girl, Lydia, she was, she was really fun to work with in the, in the branding phase, but on the sales front, oh my God, she was in my face. And I couldn't cope with it. <laughs> You know, so、yeah. you're like, this is how you, you figure out how you want to work, who、That's、you want、right. to work with, and how、yeah. as well. Yeah.、Um, one of the comments which was really telling that I got back from this list last week was、uh, someone who was frustrated, like halfway through the challenge, saying, Oh, I've had to stay up to midnight twice、mm. in order to,、uh, they were making soaps and stuff、mm. for this shop,、mm. to, to get, for my team to get to, get to the, the start line. And I could have been working on my project. This is really frustrating. I haven't got the time for this.、Mm. And I said, to, I said to him, I said, Well, Why haven't you worked till midnight on your project before? Like in the, in the last two months we've、right. been hanging out together. Right. And he's like, yeah, well,、uh, I guess I didn't have a deadline and I didn't have the,、right. the, the kind of motivation. So,、mm. so it's, an, it's an extreme example because you kind of have a pop up challenge every week with、right. all this energy and focus. But,、right. but you've got to somehow create like、um, deadlines、mm -hmm. and、um, yeah. that sense of like, there's. We've got to test this very quickly. And that, I mean, that's、mm -hmm. the whole point of、yeah. an MVP, right?、Mm -hmm. Is you test it fast and cheap、yes. to see whether it's viable or、that's、worth、right. taking the next、yeah. step. So, so it's, it's, a fun, it's a fun way of doing these things. And that's, that's our approach in Escape and my approach generally.、Mm. Um, and my time is shrinking.、Uh, it feels like it's shrinking all the time as、um, more projects come on board and、um, my family grows.、Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm just constantly saying, is this, is this how I want to spend my time? Yes.、Um, And, and if the answer is I really don't know, but I can't get this out of my head,、mm -hmm. then it's just let's, let's test it really quickly. Yeah, and I, I agree. Like, I think experimentation, like, once I embrace experimenting and actually embracing that, I, I have this kind of like a beta lab、uh, of that. I can, I can fuck up, you know, I'm allowed to fuck up. That's the point of this lab, like mixing a couple concoctions together.、Um, that's when actually some of my best ideas came out because it, was, it, was, it wasn't really like a, be, like you said, the be all thing, right? And, and, and、mm. it's got to work. And, and it's just little small action steps. That I started to really test out an idea. And partly was because I'm in a people based business, right? Like, my, I, I'm in a service based and tangible sort of model, which I think a lot、mm. of my clients are into as well. They're selling their, their advice, right? They're selling their approach、mm. on something. And you can't see it very often, right?、Um, mm -hmm. And they don't, they don't know what to build. They're like, do I, do I write a book? Do I you know, do a, a consulting package? Like, how does that work? And most of the time, it's like to know what to build and create next is, is having conversations, right? right? That's what marketing is at the end of the day. is, is, is a Conversation that you have with people to figure out what,、yeah. what are their urgent problems, what's going on in their day to day, and、yeah. how can you contribute to this problem? And, and someone else might be solving the same problem, but you're always going to come with a blend of special skills,、uh, special way of saying things, you know,、um, special way of, of, of approach, right? Which, which then becomes your niche and becomes your own brand.、Um, and and what's, what's your, you know, what are some of the important questions that you would advise someone to start asking themselves if they're in that, that stage of like, Am I good at anything? You know, maybe I used to do financial services for the last 20 years, but yeah, I'm good at it. But how do I know if this is the thing that I want to continue to keep in my tool belt? And maybe I repurpose it, right? Because a lot of my clients, for example, actually reuse their old skills and changing directions of who they help and how they help with that skill completely changes everything. And some people will、yeah. say, I never want to look at numbers again, you know, and、yeah. completely go opposite. Of a career,、yeah. and then they start from scratch again. What would be kind of some important questions that you would say people should start asking themselves if they haven't, they haven't took the time yet to really dig deep into their best skills and strengths? They don't know what that is.、Um, and, and really combining how do I blend those skills with interests and passions? And is that viable? Is that practical? Or do I just go with something that is going to make me money now and think about passion later? Yeah, that's because that's a dangerous trade off.、Um, yeah. <laughs>、uh, <laughs> it's incredibly dangerous.、Um, so, yeah, again, it, very simply for me,、mm -hmm. it's a case of saying, not saying, oh, could I develop a skill? Could I become this? Doing that? And all the fear that comes with that. It's just、um, chasing these curiosities a little、yeah. bit. So, the metaphor that we, that we talk a lot about escape is a dog chasing a ball.、Um, mm -hmm. and so, a dog chases a, a stick or a ball when you throw it. Why? I mean, why does it do that? It just、uh, it does it instinctively. Right. And the reason it does that is because it releases the serotonin, which makes it 
feel good yeah. and happy, which is the same that we get as kids when we just run because kids yes. run all the time. Yes. And it's like, why are they running? And then we come adults and we're like, oh, running's tiring or we do it because we want to be fit and healthy. Mm. Um, so, so it's like, what are those curiosities that you have that mm. you're going to, you can chase like a dog chasing a ball without yeah. too much thought. Right. Um, and the problem we have is we, we, we tend to divide like curiosities and interests and hobbies and all those kind of things, put them all on one side and we mm. put like, oh, career and serious and everything else. Mm. And, and people are saying, oh, so the only way I can combine a passion, my passion for yoga mm. and a career in it is becoming a yoga instructor. Right. And the art, that is not, yeah. that is not usually the answer because there are, there's only so much capacity for yoga instructors. There's only, there's only a certain level of, normally income you can mm. generate from and it might not tick your other good idea criteria mm -hmm. but there's no reason why you can't just start doing more yoga and at the same time mm -hmm. say what else can I explore around this and that, that mm -hmm. sort of fits so so I think it's very sim simply just a case of saying okay I have these uh, in, in escape and this is people who are not even thinking about startups this is mm. all kind of career change yeah. I have this little pot or jar of curiosities mm. I'm going to drop them off now. I've always been mm. interested in the world of um, film and, and right. acting so mm -hmm. how can I explore that right. or I've always been I've always, this whole thing around big data is kind of like I keep coming back to I keep reading yeah. blogs about it I keep mm. talking about it with my friends how can I explore that in a way that's more than just little bit of consumption mm, mm. is there a meetup group i can join yes is there an online course that i can do mm. is there a um is there someone in my community who we can like do a, a mini project together mm. and if mm. you're short of time then just adapt it to the time frame you have. that's right yeah um and i don't um, unfortunately i don't think it's much more complicated than that from a uh, and it's very true from a, from a kind of action orientated perspective yeah um the thing is just to just to I honestly think the key to this all, and it's, it's, this isn't just my thought, this is a lot of people who are in this space doing it, is just to find some people who are exploring yeah. the stuff together and just hang out together, yes. just spend time yeah. with them. And that means sacrificing something else. Or, right. or well, it's having, an exchange, uh, isn't it? I, I, like, yeah, like I, I used to think of it as a sacrifice, and I'm, and I'm like, oh, I'm sacrificing my corporate job and security. It's like, well, you can't sacrifice something you don't really want. You know, or, or it's not bringing you the the end goal that you want to experience in your life, right? So it, it is an exchange. You know, you're exchanging yeah. security of a job for this dream that you are hoping that uh, you know could meet this other tick box that is really important to you, which might be meaning or impact or leading, right? That this yeah. security job is an exchange, and once you know the exchange, then you kind of understand, you know, what's the trade off? Why am I staying up till midnight? Why am I not going out on weekends? Because it's for something bigger, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I love what you said about kind of this, these small action steps, like you know, just chase that ball. And, and, and be curious because a lot of people come to me with this question of how do I find my passion, right? And, and to me, passion is not this label because we're used to job can't answer that easily. You, you can't, it's like, how do I find a love of my life? Well, you got to be in love with life in general. You know, you have to be in the vicinity of passion, which is yeah. a, a feeling. It's an experience. So you could be passionate one day about gardening. You could be passionate one day, one day about startups. It doesn't matter as long as you're in that feeling right of, of that of what passion feels like you're, you're the, those ideas that should come to you that that now validates that feeling all of a sudden you're going to pay attention to right you're more aware of it you're more focused on it whereas if you're not living in passion at all you know uh you're not having sex <laughs> you know you're not hanging out with good people you're not uh curious or interested in anything well passion isn't going to just stand by the door and go hi I'm, I'm finally here i've been seeking for you you're just not even in that vicinity right and 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 you're right you have to be around people doing things if you want to be someone doing things and, and in time that energy that that environment is it, you've got to absorb it you know it's just how we're built you know and and, and eventually it'll get you there but you you got to start small and not think of this huge passion goal right away uh when you haven't felt passion for probably the yeah. last few years you know and we can blame we can blame our education systems for this a little bit because yes. <laughs> uh which is not the answer but it, it it stems from this idea that you yeah. um you know if you're fortunate enough to have been to um, being born into a country and an education system that allows you to really feel like there's there's all kinds of careers you mm. can pursue um then the the danger which is a hugely fortunate thing right because mm -hmm. most people aren't um then you then you've got to very quickly go oh i should be doing this it's the right thing my i've had all this support from 
parents and uh, friends and everything else. I must do this. I must do that. And there's all that guilt that goes, sure. oh, I should be. Yeah. So this things. feeling that people have that, that everyone's telling them they're a big mm-hmm. success. They've got a yeah. great job, blah, 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 society, media, friends, family, even their partners. Mm-hmm. Um, and yet internally they don't, they feel the opposite. Yeah. And so it's kind of, if, if you feel like this, then, um, and you feel guilty because you're, you recognize that you're fortunate to, mm. to, to have a well-paid job mm. and to be, well set up and loved and supported, whereas many people in the world right. um, aren't in that position. Mm. There's a danger that you feel like, well, I should stick with the status quo because I'm one of the lucky ones, yeah. and if I get my head down and work hard, yeah. I'll be okay. Can't be ungrateful. Now that's that. Yeah, and and I think that's a very understandable feeling. Mm-hmm. And I think the danger is that if you do that. Um, for 30, 40 years of your life, then you aren't going to be really happy. Mm. And if you're not really happy, you're not going to make the impact in the world that, that you have the potential to make. So Absolutely. this is why I feel like a, it coming sort of back to the journey I've been on with starting with Tribe Wanted and the islands and learning from the Fijian people and then in West Africa and this strong sense of cultural heritage that people have in these parts of the world, which is so, so, such great um, educations mm. if you can spend some time there mm. around community and like taking care of each other yeah um the the thing that sort of brings full circle for me and what we're really doing at escape now and what you're doing and and the, the movement around this is actually you can you can get um if, if people can really figure out earlier on in their lives and their careers ah oh, this is this is something i really want to spend time on mm. whether it's like you know i want to start a little healthy smoothie company or I want to join a, um, an NGO and work on this big problem in the world or I'm going to start my own little uh, tribe mm-hmm. that's going to go on a mission. Yeah. Whatever it is, it, the earlier and the sooner you do that, mm. the better for the people around you, or better for yourself, obviously, because mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. what you want to be doing. Mm-hmm. And it's better for people around you because they're going to feel like you're in the flow, you're doing what you always wanted to be doing. Yeah. And ultimately, the better for the, the, the wider community and society mm. because you are, you're contributing in a meaningful way. So it, it's actually, you know, our mission at Escape is it, can we get a million people to find fulfilling work or to transition into work where they're much more fulfilled? Mm. Um, and if we can do that, we will change the world because Absolutely. we'll get, you know, um, 1% of the work, global workforce will be doing more fulfilling work yeah and their stories will be told so if we can mm. do that that will make a dent yeah um, absolutely. and it's a big mission but um and and you're doing it in your own way and there's lots of that's others right. doing it in their own way yeah. as well so um so that's why it's so exciting it, it sometimes looks like it's slightly disconnected from like some of the bigger problems in the world but mm. actually you're like these people have um the the platform in their lives because mm. they're fortunate we do to, mm-hmm. to to really choose what we want to be doing so let's mm. make those choices and make it happen and then yes loads of good things come from it but you have to do it together yeah exactly you have to do it together and it's the ripple effect of everyone's small actions right that that then affects the rest of the world and um you know with with technology nowadays we're in a much better space to be able to do this right to be able to have that flexibility in our work and and be connected globally to people uh so we talked a lot about tribes i mean this is such a a, a, like jam-packed information which is awesome so i'm gonna be really putting my head down and putting the blog post together so we actually outline some of the things that you've said because uh there's some really good takeaways and I'm even thinking of creating like a, a nice little exercise of the questions that you've been asking, you know, the idea of validation stuff. Um, but right now, you know, for people who are interested in, you know, because a lot of people that have come to me, for example, that will say, I don't know where to find my tribe, right? I don't know what to even look sure. for in a tribe. So where would you, uh, if Tribe Wanted is a place that you have a group or something like that, where they can actually be starting their first tribe, um, you know, immersion from that, that space, where can people find you? Where can people find uh, some of the projects that you're a part of? And, um, um, yeah, a couple of links that we can put up for you. Definitely. So I, I guess I, I all the projects come out, I've got them on my own site, my landing page, which mm-hmm. is just my name, benkeen.com. Yeah. Um, Tribe Wanted is there and the history of that and what we're doing, whether any of those uh, fit your curiosities. Mm-hmm. I definitely re- recommend it. Um, I'm heading back to Umbria soon. So if you want to come and hang out there on the first right. week of May, we'll be there. Um, if you're interested in becoming a better reader, Mm. Uh, because that's a huge thing. Then we've got, I've set up something last year. We set up in Bali and it's going really well. It's called Rebel Book Club. And Probably. it's basically, we're trying to solve the problem of unfinished nonfiction books. <laughs> oh that gosh, there's so many of those. <laughs> yeah, it's so the books that actually lead to action. We're Great. trying to solve that problem of a big stack of books. I think it, Sundoku is the Chinese word of a pile of unfinished books. So right. we're trying to, we're trying to end that, okay. solve that problem. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And then uh, Virgin Startup is if you're in the UK and you're looking for small loans for startups, there's a, there's a great opportunity there and community there. And then the main mission that I'm on now is Escape the City. So we're based in London. We have our school there and then we have lots of opportunities online which are going more global. But we are going to be growing internationally over the next one to three years. And there are already pockets of communities in different parts of Europe and the States. And mm. so if you are interested in what we're doing there, the journey and how we help people escape, then just jump on Escape the City and we'll bump into each other very soon. Yeah, and I might actually make a trip up to London this year. So if we do, I would love to come see the, the school and, and meet some people from there as well. Because it's such a, is it something that I needed really when I was, you know, having that breakdown that I talked about in Moscow? That was a place that I needed to be in uh, instead of, exactly. instead of a the, therapist's and office. It, <laughs> and the escapees in London or the wannabe escapees in London need, need you, yes. your story. So yeah. come and share it. It'd be Perfect. great to have you yeah, there. Yeah, great. Thank you, Ben. I know you're a busy guy, and thanks for giving us all your generous time. And uh, we got to have uh, another conversation soon when you get back here in Bali. Yeah, sooner oh, than, than another year, please. Yeah, exactly. Then you'll be sweating <laughs> like me here instead of being in that jumper. Oh, I love, I love that. <laughs> thanks, Lydia, Ben. Have a great day. See you See later. Ya. Bye. Hey, thank you so very much for watching Screw the Cubicle TV. And don't forget to subscribe below to get all the latest cubicle crashing content on how to quit your nine to five and create a life and business on your own terms.